The question that I often get, in fact, is one of the questions I get most often in the comments on YouTube, I don't know why that is, is whether or not ejaculation adjusts testosterone levels. And the answer is somewhat complicated, but the short version is yes. Sex and ejaculation itself does not reduce testosterone levels, although it will increase prolactin levels for the reason I described a moment ago. However, abstinence or sex without ejaculation for a week or more will increase testosterone levels up to 400%. So the answer is actually complicated. It's not straightforward. What it means is that sex itself increases testosterone. However, abstinence also increases testosterone even further. So it's a nuanced answer. And I hope this is satisfactory, no pun intended, to those of you that have been asking me, what is the relationship between sex and ejaculation and testosterone and dopamine? It is nuanced. And you have to understand that nuance if you want to understand how certain behaviors impact hormones and how hormones impact those behaviors. So testosterone promotes sex-seeking behavior. And the real question then is, does sex itself promote testosterone? Sex has multiple stages. So there's the physical act of sex, there's the seeking of sex, and then there's orgasm and ejaculation. Now, it's important to distinguish between these because whether or not sex itself increases testosterone depends on whether or not the male ejaculates. And this is very important to understand because I mentioned how dopamine increases with sexual activity. Remember, dopamine and testosterone tend to increase linearly with one another. But then after ejaculation, there's a release of prolactin and prolactin actually sets the refractory period in males during which he can't have sex again. And the duration of the refractory period will vary tremendously depending on how much and how long that prolactin release occurs. It turns out prolactin levels go up. There's kind of a quiescence. The whole nervous system is promoted towards calm. And this may actually have something to do with pair bonding and the encouragement of individuals to spend more time together. So just as there are behaviors that can increase testosterone, there are behaviors that can decrease testosterone. And one of the most well-characterized ones in humans is becoming a parent. So expecting fathers have an almost 50% decrease in testosterone levels, both free and bound testosterone. As well, their cortisol levels, a stress hormone, drop by almost threefold, which is incredible. And their estradiol levels double. So their estrogen levels double. So expecting fathers Many people have known put on additional body weight. Everyone always thought that it's because they're eating in parallel with their pregnant wife. But it turns out that these effects of reduced testosterone, increased estradiol and reduced cortisol can all be explained by an increase in prolactin. So not just in humans, but in other species as well. When the male and female of that species are expecting young, they lay down more body fat. The assumption is that this is to prepare for long nights of no sleep, which occurs in many species, not just in humans. Some people take vitamin B6, I'm not suggesting anyone do this, but take vitamin B6 in order to reduce prolactin levels and thereby reduce the duration of the refractory period. But getting at this question about testosterone and sexual behavior, it's important to distinguish between these different phases of reproduction or reproductive behaviors. So there are studies showing that sexual behavior itself can increase testosterone. There was a study published in 2011 from Escasa et al, E-S-C-A-S-A. -S -S this is the stuff of textbooks. This is on PubMed. These are quality studies showing that men who observe sex, so I guess this would be observing pornography, will have slight increases in testosterone during the observation. These people actually were, were willing to have blood draws taken while watching pornography, they had increases in testosterone that were very modest of about 10%. Whereas when people participated in sex, they actually did this study where people had blood draws and they had real sex with their partners and they had 70% increases in testosterone. So there are increases in testosterone that are quite significant during the physical act of sex and far less so during observing sex. A few years ago, there was a lot of excitement about the hormone DHEA, which is mainly made by the adrenals. DHEA has been promoted as kind of a catch-all for increasing testosterone and estrogen in males and females. And indeed, 
DHEA will increase both testosterone and estrogen. This is something to be mindful of if you're thinking about taking DHEA or you're taking DHEA already. DHEA will increase both testosterone and estrogen, and the extent to which it increases one or the other will depend on whether or not you're starting off with more estrogen than testosterone, or whether or not you're starting off with more testosterone than estrogen, and whether or not you have a lot of aromatase. So for individuals that have a lot of aromatase being made by the testes or by body fat, you take DHEA, there's a good chance that a, a fair portion of that is going to be shuttled towards estrogen production and not towards testosterone production. Whereas in individuals that have low levels of testosterone to begin with, high levels of estrogen, there's a good chance that the DHEA is going to promote mainly estrogen production. At least that's what I could find from the research studies that I examined. So the way to think about DHEA, it's a kind of global uh, promoter of the sex story hormones and its specific effects are going to depend a little bit on where you started and whether or not you have ovaries or testes.